Good morning. Hello. I was just enjoying a single walled double espresso Americano with whole cream. And I was thinking all of those people that use double walled filters. But that led me to think about double, double web clients. Imagine if you could host two web client sites through one IIS server. Well, it just turns out that that is quite easy and very possible to do with version 9.2 and above. So I'm working with version 9.4 and we can kind of see how that comes together. What do I mean by that? I mean that right now I am at my default installation, HP or doesn't matter the, the web link. I'm at the default website, which is, as we all know, content manager. But what about those organizations that have multiple data sets, maybe a testing one, maybe a development one, and you want to access that web client. In the old days, we had to do a whole bunch of web client folder copies and extra accounts and all this uh, heavy stuff. But in 9.2 and above, what Microfocus has introduced is the use of the tenants file. And this makes multiple websites super easy, all hosted by one IIS service. So let's get started and see how this all comes together. It's very easy to do. It's actually in the web client guide in one of the appendix, and I'll just take you through those steps so we can see how it's done. The first thing we're gonna to need to know is the names and all of the connection details uh, that we want to the second data set. The other thing is, because we're going to reroute and use the tenant files now, we need to understand the settings on our current web client. So where do we go to find that information? Technically, we're going to go to the Enterprise Studio, and you can see I have two data sets. The old, uh, good old demo DB, which is data set ID 45. That's the one that we're going to uh, reroute, our normal one. And I also want to add, in this case, the data set called admin course, which has a DB ID of A0. So I want to add that one there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give this a fun name, and I'm going to call the admin course Neo. Uh, so that'll be maybe we could call that training. We could call that something different. But the point is you need to know what you want to call it because all of the tenant files, all of the upload paths, everything will align to that name. So let's get started. What you're going to do is navigate into the web client folder and you can see they've already pre-populated a sample or a template file for you called uh, tenant sample config. So step one is we're going to create a new folder. I'm going to right click on the white space, do a new folder. And I'm just going to call it tenants. It has to be called tenants, T-E-N. And oh, I got to look at the keyboard. So you have to call it the tenants folder and hit enter. So that's going to be the first thing we need to do. Now, once content manager senses you're using tenants, it's going to be looking in this folder. Step two, we're going to take the tenant sample. I'm going to do a right click drag. And once I do a right click drag release, it'll give me the option to copy here. So I'm just going to create that copy as I want. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go into that tenants folder and there is my tenant sample folder, which we're going to edit. Uh, the first thing I want to do with this edit is I'm going to right click and rename this one and I'm going to call it my default. Now, this is your opportunity if you want to change the name of your web client from content manager to something else like company production or Neo and Morpheus. You can do that now. So, but I'm going to keep it the same. So I'm going to call it can content manager, which matches the default uh, installation. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Well, I can copy it now or I can copy it later. Let's copy it later just so we have more information in there. Now, because we have two instances, everything's going to have to have two folders. So let me draw your attention to the service API. And one of the one of the key pieces of information we need to extract from the service API is the upload folder. So right away, we can see that everything is being uploaded to the Microfocus Content Manager WorkPath Uploads folder. So I'm going to cheat for future reference and copy this, but I'm also going to navigate into that folder, which is here, API WorkPath, and I'm going to create subfolders, one for every site I want. And to keep things consistent, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name it the same. So this folder will be content manager. And in anticipation of my next one, I'm going to uh, create another one called Morpheus. This is where the files are going to go. Did I say Morpheus or Neo? Maybe I said Neo at the beginning of the... Um, I can't take that call right now. I will in a moment. I will call this one Neo. I thought he said more in my other t in my test runs. I think I had Morpheus. So we have Content Manager and Neo. So let me uh, just um, Alan. I'll call you back. Um, Content Manager and Neo will be in the upload folder, which is great. 
Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to go to is back to the tenants folder. And now I'm going to configure this content manager tenant file. So I'm going to open it with notepad plus plus and here we are. So because this is the um, template file, what we need to do is make it unique. And you'll find that a lot of this information is, um, <clears throat> I don't know how to block a call. I'm really sorry if Alan's watching this video, I do apologize, buddy. Uh, but that being said, uh, what you need to do is populate these lines in here. You can see, let me see if I can highlight this. All this information is currently empty. It doesn't know this information and we're going to make this unique for it. The other thing you'll notice in the template file is the global work path seems to have some sort of reference to another, um, whoops, let me get rid of that too. I know you guys can see all that, but maybe I'll zoom out of that so you won't see those things. But uh, it does have a uh, reference to a T1 upload. So I don't quite know what's going on there. I think this might've been, uh, the template file must, must have been built by somebody who was using the T1 uh, data set. So what I can do is take the liberty right now and I'm just gonna override that one with the uploads path. Now, because this is content manager, I'm going to add in this with content manager which will make it unique. Then I'm gonna go down to my database ID. We all know that the default database is 45. Uh, we know that the search ahead will be false, well, not flash, false. And the work path again needs to match the one above. So I'm simply gonna paste it and I'm going to append, uh, I'm gonna append content manager to that one. And finally, I have to set in my work group server. So we know the port is 1137. I know that my work path, again, I'm gonna paste and append that with uh, content manager. And then the name is, oh, the name can be left blank. Um, no, the, so, sorry, brain fart. Uh, my server is the name of the server. Now I did find here and I left in there, the alternate port for some reason needs to be populated. If you don't have that an alternate port, if you're not using an alternate, you might not think to put one in, but you will get an error. For some reason it does need that port. So I'm just gonna copy it and leave it at 1137. So those are basically the three changes you need to make. Uh, the global path or the, the base upload path for in those three locations and then configure. So I'm gonna save this one. And it's very important, again, that the name matches your instance. Now, I'm also gonna just minimize this for a second and I'm gonna now copy this. So I'm gonna do a copy and a paste. And I'm gonna rename this one now to be Neo, which will point to my admin course. Now I just have to simply go in and edit it. Now, because it is a copy, I have to be mindful. What I wanna do is replace all instances of Content Manager with Neo. So there's one, and here is two, and up here is three. One, two, three, and of course, I have to change the database reference to A0, false, and everything else should remain the same. So this now, this tenant file points to Neo, the other tenant file points to the default uh, production database, or in, in your case, production database, in my case, the default admin. So I'm gonna save this one as well. And now I've got my content manager config and I've got my Neo config. Uh, reminder, I also have in my tenants folder, uh, sorry, in my uploads folder, where's that one? Let me jump to that. I have two folders, one content manager and one Neo. I'm almost there. There are one more things you need to do. We need to tell IIS that we now have two services. So opening up IIS, um, first thing we need to do is set up an application pool to run the alternate one. One, uh, one app pool cannot service two web clients. The error you might encounter if you forget to do this step is you'll be able to connect to one, da uh, one data set, one web client, but when you try to connect to the other, it's going to error out. Or if you connect to the other first, the second one or the first one will then error out. So uh, I'm kind of babbling. Let's just get in here and create a new ad pool. So I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call this CM Neo, just so that I know it's for my Neo one. I'm going to go like that and I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to immediately go in and edit the advanced settings and give it a service account to run. And I believe I'm going to use my EDU trim services like that and the password. So I have to go around my big mic here to type. All right, so I put those three in, click OK, click OK. Um, oh, the other ones were using administrator. Well, let me fix that. 
just to be safe. I don't. I would hate to continue on with this, and then you know what happens? It doesn't work, and then that's more embarrassing. So I'm gonna just change this. I should have checked it. I was a little bit la lazy. Uh, I should have checked it. Password zero one. All right, so there we go, administrator. Click OK, click OK, click OK, and now we have it. So now I have a dedicated app pool for my new site. Finally, I'm going to open up my default websites, and you can see now there is the content manager default website. That's perfect. All I'm going to do is right click and create an add application. I'm going to call this one Neo. Remember, it has to match everything. Change my app pool to be the one I just created, the CM Neo. And then finally, the physical path is going to be to the web client folder. So I'm going to cheat, find that one, and go to note wrong folder, content manager, web client. So I just want to grab this path, click in here. Probably could have, oh, I probably could have browsed as well. Um, it's always hard when everybody's watching to find the folder. There we go. Now I can do a test. I get my authentication, I get my authorization, everything looks good. I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna click okay. The last thing I'd like to check is just make sure that I have Windows authentication enabled, which I don't. So I'm gonna enable this one and I'm gonna disable anonymous. So that will make it uh, official. Uh, while I then, not while, next I'm gonna reset IIS or restart IIS. Now notice I haven't done anything for Content Manager. All that has been set up. It will naturally use it in the tenants file. So I'm okay with that one. If you did decide to rename it, this is where you would go in and give it a new name, uh, either rename it here or create another instance. So I've started IIS, I've set everything up. I'm, I'm really good to go. But there is one more thing you need to do. Because we have multiple websites, what we need to do is uh, modify slightly the web config file in and, in and around line 217 you're going to want to add this particular line here locking model type equals log for net dot appender dot file appender plus minimal lock that's because you have multiple um sites running now and it just needs the logging file needs uh, you just need to loosen the controls on the locking file so you don't have any issues so i've already done that ahead of time um, and i'll just showcase that here so i'm going to minimize this and now what I'm going to do is first off test my content manager. So I'm going to right click manage application and browse. And you can see it's loading up here. Let me close down the other instance of it. I might even now, nah, you know what, let it go. So it's loading up here and I am at the content manager. If I go to the top right hand corner, you can see that I am on data set ID, which is what is expected. Go back to IIS, go to my Neo, do the same thing, right click, manage application and browse. Web uh, Internet Explorer starts flashing. Um, yeah, okay, so this is what I figured. So let me close down the browser because I had it open uh, just to refresh the security profile. But I will go to Neo now and manage browse. And it's spinning. Notice the address is Neo tried to give me a little bit of an error but eventually it pulled through and it created the file if i click on this i can see that i am on ao so there i have effectively created two data sets now um, let's go back bring up the content manager see i was testing a little bit earlier with morpheus but let me click on my bookmark to open up the original one and there is data set id 45 so there you have it i have two websites hosted on the same iis server uh, what I my what I wish they could do is change that color of the bar. If you could change that to visually indicate different um, client web clients, that would be fantastic. Uh, other than that, you know, your users might know. I would anticipate most often the secondary website would be for training or dev, so only a few individuals in your organization would even know that it exists. So some of you might be saying, "Does it work? Does it work?" Okay, let's test this. So I'm going to grab Neo. Make sure I am on 45, and I'm going to grab my This Is Neo folder, drop it in, pick it up as a document one, and let it pick up the title. Click Save. I was, I was, oh, my heart sank. I thought, oh, man, did this video bomb? No, I need a container. So let me go give it a container. Um, let me just do demo. I think I have something called demo. There we go. 
And now I click save. There we go. Neo is in. Now I'm going to switch data sets. Go over to Morpheus. Now I got this all mixed up. Now I'm going to, to my other data set. I will grab Morpheus and put it in here. Put this in as a demo doc. It picks up the title. Do I need anything else? I want to make sure I don't have any other required metadata. And sure enough, it goes in. So there you have it. Working drag and drop documents into each data set. All was successful. Uh, last thing I will show you, because I'm sure you guys are just dying to see it. Uh, in the desktop client. So let me open up Content Manager. Here's the admin course. I can do a date registered for today search, and there is Morpheus. There. Uh, I will now switch my data sets, go to DemoDB, do a date registered today search, and this is Neo. So there we go. Everything works, everything's on. Super easy, uh, highly valuable. And again, uh, if you enjoy single walled espressos and you happen to use double walled filters, well, you might like this idea that we were able to bring that in and do, let's call it double walled web clients. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. We have a lot of a few new toys you might have noticed uh, now. So I hope the videos will be a lot better for 2020. Happy New Year, everyone, and see you in the next video. All right, thanks. So that was our first video of 2020. Uh, as usual, on the right, you will see a link to the content manager playlist on the left you will see our most recent video upload and in the middle is the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.